Hello students, welcome to my channel Learning History Made Easy. From today, I will be starting a series on the topic Buddhism. I will be covering topics like the historical background for the rise of Buddhism, early life of Buddha, his teachings and the spread of Buddhism. Before going into the video, if anyone is seeing the channel for the first time or if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and share it with your friends. And also click the bell button to receive notifications whenever I upload new videos. So without wasting time, let us get into the video. So in today's video, we are going to see the historical background in India for the rise of Buddhism. So the excavations made during the early 20th century, especially in the northwestern regions of Indian subcontinent, provides evidence for the existence of a civilization as early as 3000 BC in this area. And this early civilization of Indus Valley was overwhelmed with the coming of Aryans around 1500 BC. So about Indus Valley civilization we have already studied and around 1500 BC we can see the coming of Aryans uh, to India. The intermingling of Aryans and indigenous elements gave rise to what is known as the Hindu society and culture. So there was an intermingling between the Aryans and the indigenous uh, elements of the region and this intermingling uh, led to the rise of what is known as Hindu society and culture. The Aryans uh, gradually spread out from the Indus Valley into the rest of the subcontinent. So first Aryans came, there was an intermingling and they spread to the rest of the subcontinent and they carried with them a system of beliefs and social structures that were imposed, rejected, modified, adapted and after all these to produce a multiplicity of beliefs and practices of later Hinduism and the ordering of Hindu society. So uh, these Aryans, they carried with them uh, a system of beliefs and social structures. These beliefs and social structures, they were rejected, modified and later adapted. And these uh, beliefs uh, or social structures, they produced a multiplicity of beliefs and practices of later Hinduism and the ordering of Indian society. In the cultural life of the people, there was class and caste division. So, in the later Hinduism, if we see in the cultural life of people, we can see class and caste division. The Indian system of four castes created four classes of people. So, which are the uh, uh, Indian system of caste? That is, uh, Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and Shudras. There was fourfold division. So let us see uh, in detail about those divisions. Brahmanas were specialists in rituals and sacrifices and they ranked the highest of the caste. So among the top uh, most it was Brahmanas. They were specialists in rituals and sacrifices and they ranked the highest. Kshatriyas were the second and they were the royal officers and warriors. After Brahmanas we could see the Kshatriyas. Vaishyas were the class of merchants and they were the third and they possessed wealth and controlled trade. The third uh, class was Kshatriyas, sorry, uh, Vaishyas and they were merchants and they possessed wealth and they controlled the trade. So first we have Brahmanas, then we have Kshatriyas, third we have Vaishyas. Shudras were the fourth class and they were peasants. And the slaves were the lowest class and they performed occupations like butchering animals, etc. So the division was like Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, Shudras and finally the slaves were there. These slaves were termed as untouchables. For the three upper castes, the ideal course of life was divided into four periods. So regarding the three upper castes, that is Brahmana, Kshatriya and Vaishyas, the ideal course of life was divided into four periods or the four stages of life. First was a period of pure conduct and the life devoted to a young person's education. Regard, uh, uh, we tell as Brahmacharya stage. It was a period of pure conduct and the life devoted to a young person's education. After the Brahmacharya stage, 
the second period of a householder when a person would marry and have children that was called as grihastha the second period it was of a householder when a person would marry and have children the third was the period of living in the forest called as vanaprastha the third stage and the fourth came a uh, fourth came a time of withdrawal from the world referred to as the sanyasa so the four stages of life like brahmacharya grihastha vanaprastha and sanyasa was the ideal course of life for the three upper classes in upper caste in india so now what happened was see we are seeing the background for the rise of the religion of buddhism so it is interconnected with all these system in our country so kshatriyas became dissatisfied with the old way of thinking that placed brahmanas in the lead but brahmanical thought had deeply penetrated indian culture and it was very hard to change they were extremely rigid caste system and inequality of status hindu tradition had enumerated four kinds of needs or wants that humans pursue as goals in life so in a hindu tradition we can see four kinds of needs or wants that humans pursue as goals in life so what are those one is pleasure that is kama another is worldly power and advantage artha then the third is performance of duty dharma and the fourth kind of pursuit is moksha or liberation from the cycle of birth death and rebirth so kama artha dharma moksha so one is pleasure another is worldly power and advantage third is uh, performance of duty and fourth is moksha from all these cycle of birth death and rebirth so during the period from 6th to 4th century bc changes in the social economic and political structure of society took place so whatever we saw just now was the system which existed in uh, the basic society but during the period from 6th to 4th century bc slowly changes started happening in the social political structures of the society a more radical questioning leading to rejection of priestly as well as of vedic authority now came to be articulated from different quarters so radical questioning started to come it led to the rejection of priestly uh, as well as vedic authority that is brahmanical authority uh, it started to reject this came from different quarters these were called as shramanas that is literally those who strive these were individuals that is shramanas they were individuals who set themselves apart from the social class from family from the conventions of society and they took a radical choice to be an outsider in the pursuit of a goal they believed exceeded all worldly attainment so shramanas they were a kind of uh, individuals who set themselves apart from the social class uh, apart from the family from the conventions of society and th they took a radical choice they wanted to become an outsider in the pursuit of a goal they believed exceeded all worldly attainment so we learn about these shramanas who lived around the same period of gautama so these kind of uh, individuals uh, we see lived around the same period of gautama chakya muni buddha arose in response to all these conditions so during this time uh, in response to all these conditions to the caste division class division authority of the brahmanical class in response to all these conditions uh, we can the inequality in society in response to all these conditions we can see the rise of shakya muni buddha with his great vows of compassion he founded the buddhist religion balancing out inequality keeping the good points from the pre existing culture and doing away with its shortcomings so what did uh, shakya muni buddha do he had a great vow of comp compassion he founded the buddhist religion he balanced the inequality he kept the good points in the pre existing uh, culture and he did away with the shortcomings he removed the shortcomings 
he kept what is good he did not take what is uh, whatever is bad he did not take and he balanced out the inequality around the period that chakya muni buddha founded buddhism a profusion of various schools of philosophy all seeking the truth for themselves established their independence the same time when buddha founded buddhism various schools of philosophy uh, uh, had come up and all these schools of philosophy were seeking the truth for themselves they established their independence each had its own philosophical system and its own organized system of thought so uh, there were six orthodox schools and three heterodox school ma um, major ones regarding the uh, six orthodox schools Sang uh, samkhya yoga vaisheshika nyaya mimamsa and vedanta schools were the six so called orthodox schools and regarding the three main heterodox uh, schools uh, uh, heterodox schools were buddhism jainism and worldly secularism so regarding the orthodox schools they accepted the authority of the philosophy that had come down from the vedas that is we said about the six orthodox schools that is samkhya yoga vaisheshika nyaya mimamsa and vedanta these orthodox schools accepted the authority of the philosophy which had come down from the vedas we have studied about the uh, vedas rigveda yajurveda samaveda and atharva veda so they accepted the authority of philosophy that had come down from the vedas the three so called heterodox schools they were buddhism jainism and worldly secularism so all these we can see as the background for the rise of the buddhism this is how uh, shakyamuni buddha came uh, he came uh, during this time to balance out the inequality which existed in the society as a response to the um, system which was established during that time shakyamuni buddha came and he established the religion of buddhism so i hope you have understood the basic ideas regarding the background now in the next video we will see about the early life of buddha how he got enlightenment and uh, his teachings and all in coming videos we will see part by part so i hope you understood all these points very clearly in case of any doubts you can ask in the comment section and also don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel your likes and shares will be of a great encouragement for me to make more and more videos so i hope to see you all soon in the coming video thank you for watching